We've talked about voltaic cell spontaneous reactions in this chapter. What's really important is that these have been engineered to become batteries, and these are things that you use in your everyday life. Different applications require different properties, and what I want to do is point some things out in this section. Notice, lithium ions have the superiority. They are very, very lightweight, and they are much, much small in size. So what I did in this section is I wrote down four key equations. These are redox equations for batteries that you encounter in the real world. And to be honest, they make great exam questions where you would label what is oxidized, what is reduced, as well as the redox agents. You might also be asked to calculate an easier reduction. Know that it is simple. So what we have here is a picture of all kinds of batteries. I'm not going to belabor them because I've cut and pasted onto their own separate slide. If you have an automobile battery in your car, the reaction of reduction and oxidation is as follows. I want to point out it's lead plus four going to form lead plus two and lead zero going to form lead again plus two. This is something you can actually do. If someone gives you the uh, cathode reaction and the anode reaction, you can come up with the voltage for the cell. Um, how do they put it in your car? Well, they stack six of these in series to make the 12 volt automobile battery. Um, you can read the details on the bottom. I think they're really important, but again, I don't think anyone's going to ask you about them, but they could ask you to say what's oxidized, what's reduced, what is the agent. So since lead oxide, lead oxide undergoes reduction, it is the oxidizing agent. And again, that is how it would be phrased for your exam. For the second one, the dry cell, the flashlight, the button battery. We have a little trackpad with our um, computer, and that's where I thought that's where those batteries always wear out. We also have flashlights, and we also have button batteries. They are primarily made with magnesium and zinc. The anode is a zinc cup, and the zinc undergoes oxidation from zero to a plus two. The manganese undergoes reduction from a plus four to a plus two. Again, you do not have to memorize any of these equations. What you have to do is be able to identify what is going on. I didn't put down the individual potentials, but these usually have an E0 cell of 1.55. And again, lots of details on the bottom. Interesting, but again, not what you would be tested upon. The third one is a nickel cadmium battery. And maybe you've seen those. I've seen them in like our, when we used to have a phone on the wall. You know, it's in a lot of different applications. The NICAD battery is primarily, the cathode is nickel in the plus four state. It goes, undergoes reduction to make nickel hydroxide in the plus two state. So since it's undergoing reduction, it is the oxidizing agent. The cathode, we have cadmium as a zero, cadmium hydroxide as a plus two. That is going oxidation. It is called the reducing agent. Again, see the terminology we used in the beginning of the chapter. I don't know a whole lot about this, but I did look stuff up. The main thing is they are rechargeable. That means that as the reaction occurs, the products adhere to an electrode and the reaction is reversed during recharge. Kind of the same thing with a, a car battery. As you use your car, turn it off, turn it on, that's how you recharge the battery. There's a huge drawback to this and that is toxicity. So what they made are things called nickel metal hydride batteries and they can absorb hydrogen. So again, lots of details to this, but I'm stressing know your reduction and oxidations within these reactions. Almost done. The last, second to last one we have is the lithium ion battery. So of course, I put in a phone, I put in an iPad, and I put in a picture of a typical lithium ion battery. You notice I did not write any chemical reactions. So let's talk about the pluses. You already know that these batteries are very light because, and because, they, because of that, they have a high energy density. 
I'll just leave it as a lithium ion can insert reversibly into layers of graphite. When your battery is discharging, the lithium cations move out of the anode, they migrate through the electrolyte, they enter spaces between cobalt oxide layers, and they reduce the cobalt ions. That's when you're using your cell phone or your iPad. When you plug it in to recharge it, the electrical energy from the outlet drives the lithium ions back to the anode and it oxidizes the cobalt cations in the cathode. Now, there's people that spend their lives studying this. There's the R&D, research and development. There's the manufacturing, there's the cost, and then there's the marketing. It's a whole field. But again, you should be aware of it. I can't really write you the equations. They're much more complicated, but it is a redox reaction. Finally, on this last slide are the fuel cells. Notice I put they are cheap. Why did I write cheap? Well, look at the two reactants, hydrogen and oxygen. Look at the product. It is water. That's Nothing here is toxic like the NICAD battery. It's not like getting rid of your lead in your car battery. It's a whole different ballgame. So we have a cathode reaction where there is the reduction of, like what's being reduced? I shouldn't tell you everything. Oxygen starts out as a zero and it goes to a minus two. So that is the reduction process. At the anode, we have hydrogen going to a plus one. You can look up the values for these half reactions and you can see it comes to be a 1.23 volt battery. Now I put the battery here. Again, it's complicated. I know in Westerville, a suburb outside of Columbus here, there is a neighborhood that has a fuel cell to generate power. Um, you can read the fine print, but the other thing I put here is a BMW because many years ago we were at the Detroit Auto Show and they had a beautiful BMW that had a fuel cell as its power. Well, the only drawback was a fuel cell requires a tank of hydrogen and hydrogen is flammable. So as you may know, it really, really never caught on. Okay, sitting on the bottom, which really got me angry, there are also materials called solar cells. Solar cells are things that convert sunlight into electricity. They really aren't redox reactions, but they do belong here. I wanna make up the point that they're not new. Back in 1839, they were talked about. Back in 1905, they were talked about when we were in chapter six. And I don't own one, but maybe you know one that owns a, someone that owns a Tesla. So this is a short segment and quote unquote, it's not on the exam, but you can see that the redox reactions are things that you can definitely now understand. Maybe some of you will do batteries for a living. You never know what the future brings.